children have one thing in common. They've all been identified by their schools as being gifted or talented. I tried to smile, but what was I thinking all the while? Gifted pupils are the most academically able, and talented pupils are those who excel in sport or in the arts. The aim of the government's Gifted and Talented programme introduced in 2005 is to give these pupils the opportunity to reach their full potential. But what does the Gifted and Talented vision mean in practice for schools and what role do governors play? To find out, we visited a primary and a secondary school in East Sussex. Angela O'Connor is head teacher at Sacred Heart Catholic Primary School. The point of the Gifted and Talented is to recognise when children have something extra and that we need to put extra provision in place, which we've always done for special needs children. It's now recognising that the more able children, the talented children, won't just tick over. They need to be motivated and to be moved on. Gifted and Talented was a notion that Jonathan Goddard, one of the governors of the school, was initially uncertain about. When I first heard the language that was being used, I was uh, feeling slightly uncomfortable about it because the, the school, as most primary schools would say, that ev every child has got strengths and you play to those strengths. So following discussions at Governors, we decided that the curriculum committee should conduct a review of the way in which the GNT policy was being implemented within the school sort of day to day. The Governors review began with identification. There's a requirement that 10% of pupils at every school are identified as gifted and talented. How does staff at Sacred Heart Primary carry out this task? Teachers do a great deal of assessment and during the course of doing that assessment they will identify children that they think have got a particular talent or aptitude. We use uh, the CAT scores, cognitive ability tests and SAT scores. We also write to parents to see whether children have interests outside school, if they have talents, if they've won any competitions. The Chinese are making things like computers that you can say, turn on please. Alfie is one of four children in year four on the Gifted and Talented Register. It became apparent very quickly that Alfie was extremely articulate with a very wide vocabulary, far more so than children of his age. And he wasn't afraid to speak out. The Curriculum Committee was keen to know about the provision that's in place for children like Alfie. We personalise it and we target it at individual children. So when the teachers are planning their curriculum, they will plan for differentiation. But then they will look at the most able children in their class and how they can actually help them in the class to improve all the time. It's the same work, but then we approach it on different levels depending on the child's ability. So with the Tudors, for example, we're going to be linking the divorces to the Spanish Armada. So we give the information and try and make links across. Some of the other um, children in the class might not be capable of doing that, and that, uh, with that level we'd work with knowledge and comprehension. Underpinning the school's gifted and talented provision is a new focus on higher order thinking skills. Today, Year 4 has a critical thinking class about useless inventions. We're going to take something really useful, something that works, and we're going to ruin it. This is a fan for cooling your food, it's attached to a chopstick. What would be the problem with that? It might blow your food everywhere. If you're putting it up to your mouth, it might cut your lips when it's spinning. We've introduced classes around thinking as a direct result of uh, the work around gift and talented we've been doing as a school. And the idea is to make children realise that there are different ways of approaching a problem and that there are different ways of thinking. Every teacher now is trying to use the higher order thinking skills. Uh, they've all got sheets which they can uh, put in the planning files and try and adapt to their lessons, even Key Stage 1, to try and just get the children thinking a bit more. Alfie has finished his work and is heading to the Challenge Corner, another innovation resulting from the Gifted and Talented programme. We've got this box in the corner with lots and lots of challenges in to really get our brains going. And I like this thing because it's the most challenging thing that I've ever done. For children talented at sport or the arts, the school runs after-school clubs. I was in this art club that, that my year three teacher does and um, we, only a few of us went and um, we had to sign our own Christmas card and um, mine came first in the south area. The school encourages parents to explore out-of-school opportunities for their gifted and talented children. 
we can't always address the needs of the gifted and talented but we're very lucky we're able to um, tap into the excellence clusters uh, that they have a gifted and talented strand. The excellence cluster offers a program of enrichment activities. Today's activity is part of a three-day project. It's known uh, as Future Worlds and the children look at all kinds of aspects to do with what could happen in the future. Could it be a good world, a bad world, are they optimists or pessimists? And who thinks it might be a lot worse, it might be a nightmare? Who would think it might be perfect? Because there might be more wars and fighting going on in the world. I think it's somewhere in between the two because global warming, that would be bad and pollution, but um, more people in the world and figuring out new medicines and things like that. With progress, more people have better things and then people just go up to them and say, oh, I, I think I would fancy that, can I share it? And, some, and they might say no and they're like, right, that's it, I'm going to get it from you. We might follow up with a drama activity that looks at future worlds. We might do um, art and design. So we're trying to offer these children the opportunity to do things that a school can't offer them in the day to day. The Excellence Cluster activities are mainly for the gifted and talented pupils, but uh, we do try and include some of the other children as well because we don't want the same children doing all the, all the activities. So it's nice to give other children a chance and they, um, you know, they do respond to it. The impact of the gifted and talented programme on all children at the school allayed Jonathan Goddard's original doubts. The review report was very positive about the implementation of this policy within the school and the, and the benefit it was showing not just to what one might call gifted and talented children but to a whole range of children throughout the school. The governors will be monitoring the gifted and talented programme annually. I think one of the best things about putting provision in place for gifted or talented is that it shows other children what they can do. I think it enables all children to succeed. Each year, some girls from Sacred Heart Catholic Primary go on to Helenswood Performing Arts College a couple of miles away. Steve Weekly is the gifted and talented coordinator there. I've got various roles in the school. I'm a geography teacher. I also teach advanced subsidiary critical thinking and also I'm the gifted and talented coordinator for the school. So that means when I'm not teaching, I spend my free periods and out of school hours just planning events and uh, making sure that we keep, keep up to speed with the gifted and talented programme. I mean, I don't know, as long as we just keep going, going I suppose, yeah. that'll be great. I mean, Steve has had huge support in this role from one of the governor's Shirley Laws. Before I became a governor, I was on the staff of the school for 25 years, and it was very evident um, that there was lots in place for the less able, but not for the gifted and talented. Because they got on with their work and did what they had to do, they weren't really recognised in the way that I felt they should. When the Gifted and Talented initiative started at the school, Shirley became the link governor. I spent quite a lot of time doing some research, looking for websites and actually finding out what there was already out there and finding out what the criteria was for just identifying someone who is gifted or talented. There's now a clear method of identification. Each department has a list of statements which would identify either a gifted or a talented student depending on the subject. As we're teaching our students and doing different tasks, we can easily identify which ones are our gifted or are talented based on the way that they respond to the stimuli that we give them. Take out the inverted commas. In terms of provision in the school, we've got a variety of different ways that we approach it. We've got either the enrichment activities where we have a variety of different clubs running, and in terms of lessons, we're really looking at the ability of teachers to highlight more clearly the differentiation that we already do. So it's the idea of introducing high order thinking skills as opposed to similar tasks and extension work that just takes them at the same level, just fills their time. We're continuing with the investigation we started yesterday, with investigation into the effects of different sources of rain on natural rocks and building materials. Any questions? This science start? class is based around an open-ended investigation. It incorporates lots of the aspects um, that, that work very well with gifted and talented. We've got independent learning, um, research, collaborative work. They're making um, links across the curriculum. They are thinking creatively. Um, so it's very open-ended, so they can really take it where they want to. 
I like doing these investigations because they're really good because instead of following the lesson plan you can make them your own and try and experiment different ways. Tallulah is a very self-driven, so self-motivated young lady and that's an important thing to keep going with these students. They must be given the opportunities to, to extend themselves, they must be given sufficient challenge otherwise we can lose them and they can get bored and then they're not going to achieve their potential. So how are you going to know how long you've done it for then? I'm going to time it. You're yeah. going to time it? Yeah. You've started timing it have you? Yeah. Good, good. If you are gifted and talented it motivates you because you feel like you, you can keep pushing to keep making yourself better and you know that you are on a good level and that you can probably keep staying at that good level. Good, well done, round the cone. And back again. Excellent, Marie. Right round the cone. Plant the foot and push up. There's also a whole range of activities organised for the school's talented students. Drive that back leg through. Drive that back. Good use of arms, Marie. Um, I'm in sports badminton and uh, currently I'm ranked top ten in Great Britain. We started a gifted and talented club at Helenswood about five years ago. We knew about Marie before she came. She's already been selected um, to be a future England star and has been to development camps for badminton. We saw that as an opportunity that if she is talented we could possibly use her in other sports. The governing body monitors gifted and talented provision via meetings between link governors and departmental heads. We ask them, what provision have you made? On a day-to-day -day basis, um, a lot of things are happening for them in a group or perhaps out of school, but what are they doing in the classroom? In addition, Steve reports to the Governor's Curriculum Committee on the initiatives he's putting in place and how his role is developing. Very recently I've received extra support from the school. I've now got an administrator which I have several hours a fortnight and we work together making sure all the basics of the Gifted and Talented programme are solid and running. Um, we've also spent time and money putting together a G&T base so that our students have an area that they can go to with their enrichment clubs or with their homework research that is separate from the rest of the school and provides materials and technology that they will find useful. Well done, yeah, looking backwards. Both Steve and Geraldine at Sacred Heart Primary are currently undergoing lead teacher training. Lead teachers are central to the government's gifted and talented programme. The current initiative is to have a teacher in, in each of the secondary schools and a teacher across a group of primary schools which are aimed at pretty much being an example of gifted and talented teaching. Providing for gifted and talented within the lesson um, is key. The whole idea is that by working with it in the classroom it raises the standard of everyone around them. They want to be part of it, they want to get involved. So in the phrase that we've stuck with is the rising tide lifts all ships. So by providing for our gifted and talented, we're providing a support network for the rest of the school as well to improve their standards.